if you go back, say, to the 1930s when I was growing up, the, uh, the left movements were, uh, uh, including uh, um, leading scientists, were involved very much in uh, uh, activism, organization, workers' education. Uh, uh, there's uh, very good books written by uh, significant uh, major scientists, mathematicians, uh, aimed at uh, uh, the working classes. My, my family was mostly uh, an immigrant, immigrant population, first generation, uh, uh, working class, mostly unemployed in those days, but a very uh, uh, um, high level of uh, education, cultural activity, uh, uh, music, the arts, uh, psychiatry, uh, every possible political organization you can think of, uh, workers' education, uh, programs and so on, and there was considerable uh, participation uh, by left intellectuals, a good deal of interaction. And, uh, and so that goes way back. If you look at the 19th, there's now work on the 19th century uh, working class in England and the United States. I don't know about elsewhere, but and again, there was you know, a high level of culture, part of the uh, condemnation of uh, industrialism by in the working class press, mostly written by working people in the 19th century. Part of the critique was it was taking away their culture. It was turning them into uh, uh, cheapened uh, instruments. And it's interesting to compare that attitude then when the science and culture were seen as uh, 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 treasures that should be welcomed and valued by working class people uh, and today, when the left intellect, the people who call themselves left intellectuals, are telling them to abandon all this, uh, leave it for the enemy, they are the ones who should have the weapons of rationality and enlightenment. Uh, it seems to me about on a par of, uh, with trying to, with the advertising industry trying to divert people with consumerism. Uh, just go off and waste your time with something that doesn't matter, and leave the important things to. Uh, uh, the people who own and run the world. It's about what it comes down to. It's a very substantial shift in the character of people who call themselves left intellectuals. I don't see anything left about this. You were quoting from Brickman Sokal? Yes. Yeah. I think their account is unfortunately pretty accurate. Uh, and that uh, leads directly to whether uh, 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 to the nature of the left activist movements in the recent, say, the last 40 years, and uh, uh, the working classes. I mean, there's been a lot of activism in the last 40 years, and it's been very significant. It really deals with really important issues. Uh, but the issues that it's mostly dealt with are what are sometimes called post-materialist. Uh, that is, they don't deal with the actual uh, lives, problems, dilemmas, concerns of most of the population. I think the right-wing populism in part grows from that. They do deal with it, uh, maybe in a horrible way, but at least they're dealing with the issues and problems and questions that most people are f facing in their daily lives. Problems at work, you know, problems with the family, whatever it may be. The uh, left activist activism has, again, I, you know, I think we should be glad it's there. It's done a lot of important things, but uh, you know, for people who are trying to put food on the table, uh, gay rights doesn't mean much. Uh, and environmental issues, unfortunately, doesn't mean much. Uh, feminist issues are often threatening. Uh, uh, much of the achievements and the real achievements that have been made have either been orthogonal to the interests of working people or uh, sometimes have been construed as antagonistic to them. Uh, Anti-war activities, too. It uh, conflicts with uh, you know, the cultivated uh, uh, patriotism of people who no longer accept the, uh, you know, what the 19th century uh, working class conception that working people don't have any state. Uh, they uh, have international commitments. They should not be fighting imperialist wars. That's always been in conflict with uh, nationalist, chauvinist uh, tendencies that uh, uh, can't overcome it. And the anti-war 
activities are often uh, not dealt with that properly, in fact, dealt with it badly. So there's been a kind of a split between the activist movements and the concerns of the people who uh, will, if ever, uh, carry out uh, major social transformation. And hence, they've tended to drift off often to uh, right-wing populism instead of being uh, organized uh, for a, a really constructive uh, uh, assault on the fundamental problems that confront them, problems of uh, control of, uh, problems as simple as control of industry. I mean, working people do do that. Uh, and, and it's happening right now in Egypt, for example. But uh, the left activists have really not, some, some have, but most of them have not uh, been committed to uh, assisting and engaging in those activities. And that's going to be a permanent weakness of the left must overcome and of the anarchist movements. Uh, there's, we can talk to each other, but uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, there are real, uh, uh, hard uh, uh, problems of uh, daily life that people are facing. And if the uh, anarchist or other left movements don't uh, contribute to uh, uh, helping to deal with these issues, there's no reason for them to be successful, and they won't be.